the time, I only did what I did because I couldn't get a job. The, the apartheid government really, truly stopped me from working because they banned four of my plays in one year. And it wasn't fashionable. There was no T-shirt. People didn't go. They said, get out of here. He's a communist and a terrorist. Listen, if I'd been a communist and a terrorist, I would have been the minister of education today. Do me a favor. You know? <laughs> and it was frightening. It really, truly was frightening. And my father, a very fine man, a musician. Both my parents were musicians, so I grew up with Mozart as my friend, so that did help. I didn't know he was dead. <laughs> Couldn't believe that he's dead and the music is still alive. It was just so worried me. Um, but my parents, and my mother was from Berlin, a Jew from Berlin, left there in 1938 for obvious reasons, and we never knew she was Jewish until after she died. Although we kept on saying to her, Mom, man, aren't we Jewish? Because we love Jewish. My friends are Jewish. They have such nice food. <laughs> and I love the humor. And, and, uh, but anyway, my father really, truly, in the, in the early 70s, I was at the Space Theater. Um, and I got banned for Sela Osturi and then Karnafal. And, and he panicked because his relatives were in government. Um, his cousin was Dr. Diev Malan. And, um, you know, so when people say, how do you fit into all this in the apartheid, the fight against the apartheid? I said, I was Eva Brown's cousin. Um, pa chucked me out of the house. I lived in Long Street. I worked at the space, which was really, truly the beginning of my life because of the... You just did everything. You just did everything. You, you swept the floor. You scrubbed the floor. You made the costumes. You wrote the plays. You directed the plays. You acted in the plays. Sometimes two plays. One in the lower theater, one in the even, upper theater. You just planned it so that you changed your costume and you rushed up and did a line and came down. Um, and then I saw in the burger, the burger, that Connie Mulder. Do you remember Connie Mulder? We had a joke, I had a joke then about Connie Mulder. Why has Connie Mulder got such a skew mouth? Because when he goes to the kitchen, he says to the maid, see you in the garage. <laughs> do you know when I think of it now, I think, was I mad to do it? And he wanted some four on standard Afrikaans to be part of the censor board. And I thought, wait a minute, Pa loves the movies, loves the movies. He will go to the movies uncut and he will go free. So, pa, I phone him, tell him about the sensor art, and Pa, you can join the sensor board and you can see movies free. What? Pa was there like a shot. And he was on the sensor board. So three months after I was banned by the censors, my father was a censor. <laughs> and two weeks later, he phoned me and he said, come, I stay, come with your brother, come with you. He said, listen, I just want to tell you something. I have come to meet these people who have banned you. They are rubbish. You must not be angry. You must not fight them. Just make fun of them. Make and that's, I thought, well, make fun of them? Not difficult. If you suddenly realize that they're all you make fun of them. And really, truly, it was a very, it was a, it was a work in progress. And it's sort of really, truly. And I had a gift in this awful system that I then suddenly realized my, my discomfort. It wasn't yet anger. But my discomfort being an Afrikaner, being a German because of my mother, not realizing I was Jewish as well. I'm delighted to be a Jewish Afrikaner. I belong to both chosen people. But that I only <laughs> found out later. My discomfort of actually being honorably treated by my colored neighbors in, in Athlone, and we were in Pinelands, and my great, my great grandmother was my, our colored maid called Sunny Abader, who said, I'm going to Afrikaans to talk to you. I'm going to talk to all that thing. Something was wrong, you know, something was wrong. Um, and, and it really started after I'd been to university when I eventually finished school, Nassau Hoer School, and I went into the Navy. Actually, I was drafted into the Army, to an Army camp out of Futsalstrom to fix Army trucks. I thought, ah, no. <laughs> so I wrote a letter to the then Minister of Defense, Um Pievia. Because his children used to sing in my father's choir, so we knew Tani Elise quite well. So I knew how to do Evita quite well. Uh, and he put me into the Navy. Well, there you are. <laughs> early, early patronage. Early, very bribery and corruption started right. It was policy in those days. It wasn't anything else. Uh, but when I went to university and I, and I started uh, uh, to do a BA drama because, no, to be a BA. I wanted to be a teacher. I have got eternal respect for teachers. They changed my life. This one teacher changed my life. There were 10 others who nearly beat me to death. They used to beat us up in the morning to warm up. That's what they did in those days. That's why I learned when the boys were booking to get a cane, I put up my hands like the girls. 
You know, I thought I'd just get it on the hands, but it didn't work. Um, but Aloise Nell, my teacher in Standard 8, when we had to write a poem, it was an Afrikaans school, you must write me a poem. I thought, what poem? Gedicht nie, oh yeah, I can't. Miss Nell, I can't. She said, yes, you can. No, Miss Nell, I can't. She said, Peter, you can do anything. If you put your mind to it, if you believe in it, if you work towards it, you can do anything. And she died last year, and I miss her because she actually put me on that right track because she's right. You know, you can't marry Sophia Loren, but you can make an Evita Besaidna that looks like Sophia Loren. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you can do anything. Um, and so that's why, that's when I realized, when I was at drama school, um, and, and, and I started doing beer drama, and we were doing exercises in the, in the drama department. We were allowed two colored people a year, you know, the token, two colored people. And Bill Curry was one of these actors who was there. And we acted together, we did, we did Bernard Shaw, we did Shakespeare, we did, and we were physically involved, and we argued, and we were brothers, and we were, and when we left, we couldn't go anywhere together. We couldn't even have a cup of tea, let alone a drink. Something was wrong. Something was wrong. Um, and so it was an easy target for me. E a part of it was so appallingly, singularly bad. There was, no, there was no, nothing came out of it. I keep on saying, at least Hitler had the Lenny, Lenny Riefen style to make movies. We had absolutely nothing, just horror. And, uh, and so it was black against white, good against evil. So I had easy targets to script writers that were not unsubtle about writing my material. Today is terribly complicated. Today, I am delighted to be here, and I don't bitch for one moment because I'm a terminal optimist. And my definition of optimism is expecting the worst, hoping that the worst will never be as bad as I imagine. So far, so good. But it is no longer the need to talk for anybody. When I, during the apartheid years, most of the people had no voice, and the people who should have been heard were banned. Nelson Mandela didn't even know what he looked like, let alone what he sounded like. Um, and so we actually spoke on behalf of a point of view. We had the ANC colors on stage, wherever we could. Nobody knew. I mean, the security policeman who spied on us didn't know we were quoting from the band works of Nelson Mandela or the words of Steve Biko. He was trying to still write on the word, what are you f***ing with the mock, the mock, <laughs> the mock, you know. And it was the irony of having the green, the gold, and the black of the ANC colors on stage. If you were trapped with those colors, you went to jail. If you took away the black, you were a springbok. <laughs> But today, it's my opinion, it's me, my opinion, um, which means everybody has got the freedom of expression, the freedom of speech, the freedom of argument, the freedom of anger. And it's tough because the red line of racism becomes closer and closer and closer to the edge of my foot. And I will not cross that line because I've been fighting it all the time and I loathe it as much as I loathe the fact that there's denial around HIV and AIDS because they both are incurable, but if you have care, you can actually deflect the horror of what racism can still do. So um, I'm thrilled to be here, and I have got the scriptwriters of a lifetime. The ANC. <laughs> the Afrikaanse Nationale Congress. I mean, they are just <laughs> too wonderful. And truly, uh, Evita is now a member of the ANC. They deserve her. And it's wonderful because I get phone calls from people in Lutuli House saying, I think we saw her in the passage. I said, of course you did. <laughs> She's going to marry Jacob Zuma.